All right. So it is said, fellas, in case you didn't know, that teamwork makes the dream work. You ever heard of that? Sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's continue this conversation about Deer Park. But before we do, um, building a team, that's a big part of making any strategy work. Spencer, let's start with you, and then maybe we can pepper Michael about mm. his team that he's building for uh, the RV strategy. Yeah, I mean, um, there's the classic business book, Good to Great, and he talks about the importance of having the right people on the bus, the right people on the team. I mean, I think um, you know any successful real estate strategy requires an exceptional team that's tailor made for that team, and uh, and so in the context of of what Michael's doing, we thought we can kind of dig into your team a yeah. bit more, um, who you brought onto the team, why you did, what role they play, and why that's important to to filling out the the needs of the strategy. Um, so it starts with you, yeah. Right. Yes, so me. your firm is Firm Ridge. Mm. Um, you're a, de uh, a, a development firm. Mm. All right. Uh, who's on your team? What roles do they play? Yeah. And then we can go from there. Yeah. So this team, and as you guys know, um, this team was curated and developed. Uh, well, actually, you, this team was curated and developed through many people that you guys actually know and came through through recommendations, just relationships that I've cultivated with you guys. So as a development shop, um, there's critical roles that you need. And, you know, first and foremost, if you're developing raw land is in, uh, you need an entitlements expert. Now you can go and do that yourself and you can learn and, and, and dig in the weeds. But if you have somebody that is experienced and gets not only how to get something entitled, but how to work with the people that are responsible for approving a project, um, that's an incredible opportunity. And so this opportunity came to me through you guys, um, and I brought on this this uh, gentleman named Brent Coles. Um, and this is more for for the audience. So uh, Brent Coles uh, came up in his professional career in Boise, Idaho. First off, before I even get into that, he's one of the nicest and just greatest uh, he's just an incredible person in general. He's just incredibly kind, incredibly nice. Just this, this guy that you love to be around. And Brent and I, have, we've traveled together and we've gone on to go look at some properties. Just the, the, as you would say, Spencer, a salt of the earth guy. Um, but back to his experience. So he started off his career uh, in the planning department at, in Boise, Idaho. And I'm telling you guys stuff you already know. Uh, spent, I want to say a decade. I might be getting the dates wrong. And just became excellent at his job. He then moved on to city council uh, for many years. And again, Spencer, you can chime in and, and tell the story. And then because of his passion about development and pushing the city of Boise, I guess, to become like one of the premier cities in the country, ended up getting elected to become the mayor of Boise. And so he had a great, you know, he had a career as mayor. Um, and then now he's, he's sort of, you know, moved on and he is you know, uh, he's been doing a bunch of different things since that time period. And I just happened to catch him at the right time. And so we brought him on as uh, head of our entitlement. So that's Brent. I'll let you guys chime in. I, it, is there anything else you want to say about Brent? Because I know he's, he's a dear friend. So, so one question I have, um, yeah. and, and, and Brent's great, um, you know, just recognizing uh, the he's very good at understanding how to get to the needs of a given jurisdiction and mm -hmm. then meeting their needs. Uh, how are you able to work with someone? Again, let's, let's say you go into, and I'll use, um, uh, Glacier National Park in Montana as an yeah. example. I don't know if you have any interest in that <laughs> park in, in your oh, strategy, yes. but, uh, he doesn't necessarily know anyone right. in and around the park. So like, how does that work when you're going into a market yeah. that neither you nor, nor your entitlement expert has, has been in yeah. and what, what role does he and or you play in, in getting entitlements in places that you haven't been before? Yeah. So the first thing you want to do is get access to anything public related about the planning department, if they even have a planning department. So whether that's critically meetings and things like that, and you want to research, um, sort of what's going on there. But the most important thing you're looking for is who are the local experts that keep popping up in those meetings, especially in these smaller towns. These are people that have local connections. They're often very closely related to people that are 
approving projects. And so that's sort of a first step is you don't want to go direct to like, let's say you get a property under control, under option, yeah. um, or you've purchased the land. You don't want to go direct to the city or anything else. You first go and you sort of cultivate relationships with the working professionals that will be directly participating in your project and create a sort of coalition. First. So, so Brent's doing that. He's finding the right people on the ground who understand the complexities, the nuances of the county, Correct. the city, uh, and and so forth. Who who else on your so so one one piece of this is entitlement. What's another piece? Yeah. So let's move on from entitlements. You get it improved. You got to get underway with finding subcontractors, and you got to get underway with with the construction process, right? Um, and so again, that's another area where it's helpful to have local somebody local on the ground and so what was really interesting in this neck of the woods is um sam carlson's father who has a lot of um development experience and, and general contracting experience is around here and so he is on the team as a contractor so he has built a ton of uh single family projects in boise and he was available and he's around here. So he is on board as a contractor. So John's going to build this project. What about yeah. your projects in other parts of the country as, as those come together? Will, will, will you find contractors in those local jurisdictions or what, what do you have in mind? Yeah, that's, that's the goal. The, what our goal is to, A, yes, you got to find the local GC, of course. Um, but then you want to bring in in-house if you, can, if you have the ability. You want to have somebody in-house to then construction manage alongside the GC. And so John will be a part of that whole process as well. So okay. he'll be on, he'll be not necessarily on the ground in all these projects, but he will be participating as well. So what, what about all the details that go into this? Yeah. So <clears throat> you've got the design piece mm -hmm. and how that interacts with your entitlement and, and your, your construction piece, mm -hmm. who's handling the design. Is that outsourced? Yeah. So we have, you know, here we have a local architect and, he works actually very closely with John. So they're back and forth. They, you know, they send uh, our team revision. I mean, mainly what they're doing now. So we have two, we have a landscape architect. So I have a landscape architect. Um, we have an architect, we have an engineer. Um, and between the three of them, um, that is handled through our construction management side, which is, which is John. Yeah. Well, he's the contractor here on this one as well. So all that goes through him. He brings it to us. We sit down, we have conversations and, and that way. So this first project, um, <clears throat> how far along are you? Are, are, are you shovel ready or are you pre-entitlement? Where are you at in this? Yeah, so the that's project? the beauty of this thing. Um, we are shovel ready. So okay. we have every, well, we have everything done. The design is done. Everything is approved. We have one last thing to go through. We've already have verbal approval just to go through the process. And that's the, um, uh, the septic, but everything else is done. We technically could get going today and the other thing that's that's amazing about this is that we're actually not in a rush so even though we're ready to go we don't have any debt we fully own the land uh there's no time clock and so oh, yeah you know, so we're 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 pays we're in a beautiful situation here we've put a lot into it we've invested a lot of time money and now we're sitting we're sitting pretty right now so so how do you think about the design piece of this um I mean, yeah is, is this an rv park that looks like every other rv park are you doing special things like what is your team doing yeah and in terms of design so there's like design, there's experience and then there's the technical piece right and yeah. really the what you what you got to think about is you're creating a a sort of land horizontal development right and these people are coming with their housing and so you need to make sure that you're building uh what you're building what you're putting in place is compatible with what they're doing so when it comes down to like the site design and and drive aisles ingress egress how rvs can pull in and out, things like that. Yeah, we're designing to modern specs, which have evolved, like RVs have gotten bigger. Um, so in terms of spaces and specs, we're designing so that there's no creative spots. You get a lot of RV parks and they'll have some creative extra spaces that, okay. uh, you know, but yeah, so that's that amenities wise, um, you know, we're putting in, we have this idea to be heavily programmed. And so we're, it's gonna be a lot of experience. Heavily stuff. programmed, what does that mean? So, you know, we have this space allocated in, you know, a certain area where there's a, a, a stage where we're going to be, this is just one example, where mm -hmm. we're going to be uh, showing movies or bringing in like acoustic, you know, music and just having like a whole lawn cool. area. We have a, 
a large trail that goes around the whole uh, site. And what's fascinating is that there is actually public land next to us through this, you know, beautiful sort of, you know, we're in a, we're in a temperate rainforest here, right? And so this trail meanders back through the, through the, the temperate rainforest and down to this creek. Now it's completely overgrown, but there's this incredible opportunity to have this connectivity to this park. So there's that, and there's the typical, there, there, there's going to be, you know, amenities for children where there's going to be this great playground. And, you know, this keeping up with the Joneses, I would say it's going to be pickleball and things, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. But, you know, we're going we're gonna to have all that. But I think the biggest, um, again, you know, the greatest thing about this, this project is, is the location. Like you're here to be in the majesty of Olympic National Park. So, so how did you choose which amenities to include? Like, yeah. Was there some like you have the team you're talking about these amenities like what was that help help, help the audience understand yeah, the process we, to get get the right site design. So we wanted intelligence, right? You want to you want to know what's out in the market, but at the same time we want to create something that differentiates, right? That um, is experiential that sets us apart. It's not just hey let's build another RV park. And you could by the way we can build another RV park and you know, supply demand for it and I was just there. And yeah. I do think that will work. But, um, uh, you know, we're, we're, you know, again, like the heavily, heavily programmed. So I forgot what was your, <laughs> I just lost my train of thought. What, what was the process to, to develop that site plan? Like, um, uh, were, were you, did you talk to, did you visit other sites to understand what they had to ultimately decide what, like, how, how do you choose amenities? How, how, yeah. how did, how did the site plan come? Right, out? right, right. Yes. So, um, yes, we did. We did visit a lot of sites. Uh, we looked up to make sure that the, the, the individual sites we were putting in, um, would be, would be easy to navigate and get set up within. And then we took, um, experiences like places that were doing things that created this sort of environment and atmosphere that you wanted to be a part of. Right. And so, um, you know, we, when we had these advisory board meetings, I remember Spencer, you and I were talking, uh, you had brought up this amazing spot out in Waco and we went and, and, and checked it out and I'm forgetting, forgetting the name of it. Um, Magnolia place. Yes. Magnolia yeah. place. And we looked at that and just, that was my one contribution. Yes. To which, <laughs> 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 which is a magnificent sort of, um, opportunity to bring that in and create that curation, which, which, you know, Magnolia place just has this, this, you know, amazing atmosphere and it's, it's curated, there's food. So the idea is we'll have a, also, and I didn't mention this, um, this rotation of food trucks. So we'll have a spot for them to come in and, um, Oh, you know, we'll, cool. we'll create that on certain days. How much did your experience in music play into that? If at, if at all. Yeah. Um, my experience in music, I would say played into it a little bit. There's a balance. So I used to, when I was younger, go to festivals a lot. Right. Um, I was at, I was at the first Bonnaroo. <laughs> I used to go to all these <laughs> festivals and, um, you know, you get older and there's this sort of balance where you have to strike. We're not creating, um, like a party atmosphere where you're going to have like a concert, but we're creating a ambiance, I would say. Okay. Um, so it's not, it's not anything like, like it's just, it's not appealing to a crowd of just debauchery. I would say it's not that. So how do you manage this thing? Like, are you, you, you going to move your wife and kids? And live May, on site I mean, and, uh... I mean, depending, <laughs> you know, no. Um, yeah. So we, you know, and we've had, I've had a lot of conversations with, people that I respect a lot in this space. Um, and uh, one large institution who owns a lot of more manufactured housing in this space had recommended this property management group um, that they um, had, had told me there's a lot, they had a lot of RV experience. So we haven't decided on them because it was them and also JLL, uh, uh, the group out of JLL gave us another management group. And right now we're pre-development. So we've actually been talking to both of them. Um, They've actually sent both sent us proposals, but we haven't actually gone down the path of deciding which one yet. But we're excited about both. They're two great options. They're local, and um, yeah. So there's there's two so, options. So there. in your mind, as you think about management, um, yeah. what does the right management team look like? Yeah. Um, so for this property in particular, right? And I'm, I'm assuming we're talking about property managers uh, yeah, well, yeah, that are on, manager. the, on the, yes, yes. On the ground, on the, ground. on the ground property managers. Like, yeah. you, you describe this as like a hotel like yes. product. And I think a hotel and I go, okay, this is, it's a hospitality play, right? Yeah. And hospitality is all about the personal touch, yeah. the, the, uh, 
uh, making every guest feel like they're the most important, important yeah. person. And when I don't think, when I think of RV, I don't, I don't think they, um, <laughs> uh, again, be surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's like, but, I, yeah, yeah it's, like, been, it's changed a lot. You'd be okay. surprised. Um, we, when it comes to, and this is a conversation that we're having about hospitality, right? This is something that could help take this bark, help us differentiate. Yeah. Um, but for our property, I mean, again, we're building this, this, um, welcome center and we're putting in a nice apartment there and you know for us we know that there's a lot of demand for people who want to be able to come out and live in this place and obviously for us our target demographic is a person who's or a family husband and wife who are now sort of past they've had a career and they're full-time rving and they're looking for a place to settle down um, and they would be the on-site every day they this is their home and their property and they want to take it. And that's common across. So in this area. subtype is common, right? Your, your yes. property manager lives yes. on site. They live here. Yeah. And they, okay. they, you know, we want to find the the right group. So that will be sort of what I would say the head. Now we're, we'll probably have a few others that, that get involved on the ground based on how we want to curate this. Um, so we'll probably have somebody to be event coordinating. Right. And okay. again, when I say events, not like big raging parties, but yeah. like the little, the little acoustic, quiet concert in the evening where you can go and have a drink and yeah the s'mores cook out and the, the movie night yeah and yeah no i, I yeah, get our it. managers I, here yeah on site. so um and this is a, a a bit of a tangent away from the team but um you're talking an rv resort whatever you know, yeah. whatever the term i should use is there a camping component here i mean if someone come, wants to come and throw a tent up can they do that or yes so is that in yeah, what's there's a there is space for that, and there's actually just from like the deal side, there's actually opportunity to expand uh, adjacent. Now we will. Uh, that's sort of my, definitely a, at my direction, which is putting in camps. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a tent guy at heart. You know, yeah. that's what we've grown up doing. So yes, we'll have some of that. I think that's important, um, just to allow others to come and experience this. this yeah, but location. when I was thinking about management, I thought, well, you could do a glamping sort of thing. So glamping is when you don't have to bring your own tent. They already have a tent for yes, you. True, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, well, they're, 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 in there lies a little bit of the complexity because of what we've gotten approved here. So okay, we've, yeah. yeah, so that becomes a, uh, it's probably doable, but I would say it's a little bit grayer than here's a tent, here's a camping site. So, so if someone's listening uh, and they have their own development firm and they have their own team, um, you know, and what advice do you have for maybe the, the, the young developer who's just looking to, to put their team together yeah. or, or an existing developer is like, I don't know if I have the right team. Like how did, and, and obviously some of the relation, I, I think all the relationships that came yeah. through, through people you knew or people yeah. that, that knew people who knew you, yeah. uh, what, what's some advice? That two you words, in building the team? two words, even if you're an expert. And I think I've seen the most, accomplished real estate professionals, um, counsel and trust, seek counsel and bring in people that you trust. And that would be my two biggest pieces of advice. Cause you're, you're never going to know everything and you need people that you can depend on. So I've built an advisory board of people that I, I mean, this is, so my team is trust and there's, there's, there's that, uh, trust and counsel from my team of, I would call it experts. And then there's this branch of people because, yeah, this is, there's a lot, there's an incredible amount of experience on the team, but there's always room for that additional expertise and outside eyes, right? So, you know, you're having you, you're in the advisory board, right? Uh, Cam Falconer, who's uh, a CEO at Heinz, who's been one of my mentors. Um, another one of our, our colleagues, Stephen Porter. Um, so, you know, having people that I trust and respect and uh, I, I can just confide in is, is, absolutely critical for me and probably for everyone else. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the things I've been impressed with. Um, and I'm looking at Sam now a little bit, but uh, what, what you've built, Michael is, um, you're not doing it on your own. You are recognizing where you have weaknesses or it, you might view as weaknesses. All of the rest of us go, I think you're just, you're fine. Um, but you seek out advice from others. And I think that's, that's really valuable, especially in this context. And so, to, you know, to, to those who are listening or watching, um, like ha having that humble mentality that 
uh, or, or, or just maybe it's smart mentality. You, you don't know what you don't know. And, and so the more people that you bring in to advise you and to support you, uh, the, the higher the probability of success or the higher, higher the probability that you'll be able to avoid uh, significant risk. Anyone yeah. we're missing on the team? Yes. That, that yeah. yeah and I want to get, I want to get to them. So um, Kyle Holmberg, who's um, been a tremendous resource. He's been working with me on um, basically all the ins and outs and nuances of capital calls and, you know, um, you know, meeting with potential LP capital, you know, all that kind of stuff. So Kyle, well, again, is another guy that came through, through your network and he actually is with us at Adventure in Series, our COO. So he's come on and he's, he's, helping me on the development side. His title's kind of fuzzy, you know, um, yeah. he's like a development associate, but not really. I mean, he's, the, he's in the weeds with me everywhere. And then, um, um, we have Arturo, uh, also who's, who's assisting your analyst, right? Analyst. Yeah. 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 Arturo, so. yeah and that's, um, he was an, incredible by the way. And he's trained, he's been with, how long has he been? He's another ACR guy. Uh, and he's still with ACR as well. Um, that's the thing that's incredible about what we have here is that I can, we can delve into these resources and, um, they're available and they're trained on training on our stuff allows that, um, easy exchange of information, right? We've trained and we kind of know how to, um, transfer information, right? Especially on the underwriting stuff. So it's very, it's very smooth. Um, and I think that's the whole, that's the whole team. So. Yeah, no, it, uh, I, th I think you've assembled a, a solid team. Um, I like the approach that you've taken, which is more, more the merrier, yeah. <laughs> for lack of a better term. <laughs> Sam, any last pieces of uh, or last commentary you'd make? <clears throat> nothing, nothing uh, to, uh, I, I guess I'd only add this. We at, you know, the three of us collectively have our own roles within uh adventures in siri and with what michael is doing you know having those roles in any company is is so important right um whether it's in my software company whether it's in adventures in siri whether it's in you know uh, this deer park development you need to have the ability for someone to focus on whatever the operational component is because you can't have anything out of sync or out of harmony or not moving, right? And again, I guess, uh, so you've, you know, you've assembled a team because of that, this thing is shovel ready. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you're also, sounds like you're sitting in a position where I mean, you're, you know, just waiting for the right, you know, next move. Or, mm -hmm. Anyway, so good job assembling a team. And no, I've got nothing to add to it. It's been a, this was, this was an interesting episode because I think, this episode we talked about your team right but if i'm listening to this episode and i'm somebody who wants to start my own firm or, or whatever the case may be i would be thinking look at all of these different people that he brought in to cover all of these different aspects of building a strategy and completing this strategy or this project look at what he's done now Again, last season, we talked about deal making and deal doing, and everything was hypothetical. We just went through people's names, their roles, what they're going to do, their background, their experience, their expertise. This is like getting down into the weeds of actually doing a deal. So I, I know in, in this season, especially uh, with the, the previous episode and then the one that's to follow, I will likely just be listening a lot because I'm not a subject mac, uh, matter expert in terms of, um, you know, the real estate and, and all that kind of stuff. But building a business, I feel fairly proficient in that and understanding strategy. And uh, I think you started out with good to great, right? And that to me is if you're listening to this and if you're thinking about starting your own firm, whatever it is, you can't, and well, you shouldn't do it alone. You're going to need what is the phrase? Uh, you go faster alone, but further together, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, that's been my experience. Anytime uh, I try and do something myself or and try and, or I try, as you guys always say, get out over my skis, you know, it just doesn't work. And I think anytime we try and be everything to everyone, it just doesn't work. So good job. The listeners, it's been really, I think it's been really hopefully insightful just to, just to see all the different people that you brought in and at what capacity. 
So uh, the next episode, we're gonna, are we going to actually, I know this is not that next episode, but we're going to jump into a model because we've been talking about this. So we're actually going to jump into the model that you built for Deer Park, correct? Yeah. We'll do a little bit of marketing analysis to awesome. how we get there. Yeah. It's gonna be fun. Awesome. All right, cool. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Adventures in CRE audio series. For show notes and additional resources, head over to www.adventuresincre.com slash audio series.